everyone, it's Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I have another haul for you. I have been coping with some stressful feelings by buying books. So I have, I think, around 30 here. I don't think I'm expecting any more in. I say this now and watch probably today in the mail, I will get like four more. So <laughs> let's just start here. I need to find a home for some of these. I mean, well, all of them, but I need to find a home for some of them on a shelf if I can wedge them in. I, I'm doubtful looking at everything here. <laughs> I will find a spot, but that's okay. So I'm going to be leaning in and out of the frame to get stuff um, because it's all piled up on the guest bed, which is right next to where I film. So yeah, actually, let me see if I can move this back a little bit more. That's better. Okay. Hi. All right. So from my mom, she gave me the seventh and eighth book in this main clam bake cozy mystery series by Barbara Ross. The first book, in case you're interested, is called Clammed Up. I've heard that's a very good series from her and a couple of my other friends on library things. So I have books seven and eight. Um, no, I have not read any of them. And yes, I do own one through six from my mom. Then I have The Gods of Gotham. This is the start of this Timothy Wilde series set in um, 1845 in New York City. Um, and it's with the police, uh, the first police force, Great Potato Famine hits Ireland. These two events will change New York City forever. So it's about a man named uh, Timothy Wilde. Currently he's a bartender. Um, and he has to take a job in the newly minted PD department because his bar burned down or something. <sighs> Returning from his rounds one night, Tim collides with a girl no more than 10 years old covered in blood. She claims that dozens of bodies are buried in the forest north of 23rd Street. Timothy isn't sure whether to believe her, but as the image of a brutal killer is slowly revealed, an anti-Irish rage infects the city. The reluctant copper star is engaged in a battle that may cost him everything. This is a quote from USA Today, which sounds like this could be a nice blurb for it, hence probably why it's in the back of the book. But it says, if your concept of paradise is popping in a DVD of Gangs of New York while rereading Caleb Carr's The Alienist, then put this book on your to-buy list. So, supposed to be good. She read these out of order, unintentionally. She's read, I think, three and then two and then one. <laughs> but she did like them a lot and said it was really good. So, got that from her. I have the second in the Nikki French Free Decline series. Uh, she doesn't have the Wednesday one yet, but I have Monday here on my shelf, so now I have Tuesday. And she gave me Frontier Follies by Reed Drummond, which I just gave her for Christmas. So <laughs> I paid for it, and I'm getting it back again for free. So those are from my mom. Next up, apologies if you can see me. Okay. <sighs> Next up is some books from Paperback Swap. So I friended this very nice lady there. She lives in Wisconsin as well. And she had a bunch of books about Princess Diana, whom I love. I think most people love her. So uh, sh I ordered two and she sent two free. So the free ones are Diana, Her New Life by Andrew Norton. And I've read no books about Diana previously. Let me rephrase that. I haven't read any books about Diana previously but I do remember some of these coming out especially around her death unfortunately I just never got the guts to buy them when they were new or read them or anything I didn't let myself for reasons I don't know um so it's sort of like I'm sort of writing that wrong I guess so there's this one and then there is A Royal Duty by Paul Burrell Paul was her bodyguard for a while no he was the Queen's favorite footman and the Princess of Wales's trusted butler. That's what it was. I know his name. I just didn't know who he was to her. So that one. And then the ones I requested are The Bodyguard's Story, Diana the Crash and the Soul Survivor by Trevor Reese Jones with Moira Johnston. And Diana's Boys, William and Harry and the Mother They Loved by Christopher Anderson. This seems 
more gossipy and maybe less reliable than the others. Not sure, but whatever. They didn't cost me any money, so please and thank you. One moment. Let's grab the stack next to me. Okay, so actually these two stacks go together. Yes, these two stacks go together. And maybe I will finish here because I'm going to finish there. So, <laughs> God, sorry. <laughs> okay, next up, <laughs> I have the two books I got for Book of the Month Club this month. The first one is The Kindest Lie by Nancy Johnson. This is about a white lady uh, in 2000, no, a black lady in 2008. Ivy League educated black engineer, married to a kind, successful man. He wants to start a family. Her husband wants to start a family. She's not sure. She gave up a baby uh, when she was a teenager. And for reasons, I keep saying that today, sorry. <laughs> but for some reasons, they go back to her hometown to um, stay with her family. And so she's finding out what happened to the baby that she gave up. And then she befriends a young white boy and they help each other grow. Um, heartbreaking divide between black and white communities plums the emotional depths of the struggles faced by ordinary Americans in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis. Capturing the profound racial injustices and class inequalities roiling society. So it's motherhood and race and Stuff. I've heard good things. What a wrap up, Laura. And then this one, which I've never heard of before, but saw them listed as like a, you may want to add this book on. So it's What Would Free to Do? A Guide to Living Boldly by Ariana Davis. So this is sort of self-helpy, memoir-y, based on Ariana and her relationship with Frida, you know, as an admirer, current admirer, since obviously Frida is long since gone. Um, okay, so explores the Latinx and feminist icons, signature style, outspoken politics, passionate love life, courageous art, even in the face of pain and heartbreak. So it talks about how you can adopt some of Frida's spirit and gusto for your own life. So it's about Frida and then how to sort of help yourself. So it sounded interesting and I hadn't seen or heard of it anywhere before. So what the heck? And then this... I saw at Barnes & Noble when I was there in person a couple of weeks ago, and then I saw it later on on Book Outlet for much cheaper, but whatever, it's fine. I want to support Barnes & Noble too. So that is Horizon by Barry Lopez. This is about, um, let's see, through the author's travels to six regions of the world, so Western Oregon, High Arctic, Galapagos, Kenyan Desert, Botany Bay, and the ice shelves of Antarctica. This should be fascinating, wonderful, as always. Wonderful writer, so I have that one. And then the last, this is number nine. This is the ninth book in the Secret of the Pink Carnation series by Lauren Willig. This is The Garden Intrigue. And um, this is the series that Danny and I at Spinelli Speaks are doing our year-long buddy read with. We are halfway through the second book now, The Mask of the Black Tulip, and that's good. So I have the ninth one, which means I currently have the entire series now, which is a nice feeling. Okay. Then. Okay, so again, I don't know why I don't let myself read books I really want to read why I stop myself from really geeking out and learning about something deeply. It could be something at like a movie trilogy or um, like how creatures survive in the deep when they don't see sunlight or I'm interested in a ton of stuff. I'm a really curious person and I really love learning. And the more I learn, the less I know. That's one fact of life I found out for sure. Anyways, one thing I stopped myself from really getting into despite the fact that I talked about it all last year, sorry, um, is The Witcher. Now, I still watch the TV show all the time. I think my favorite thing about it is the humor. Call me weird, but I really like it a lot. So I started reading the first book uh, in the series, which is a collection of short stories. This series is sort of like um, 
Lois McMaster Bujold in that there's the publication order of books and then there's a different reading order which is like the correct linear timeline in the storyline. So I'm following the linear timeline order of books to read The Witcher which starts with then, let's start with um, a book of short stories. So I'm working on that very slowly but again I don't let myself read that one. I don't let myself learn everything and remember people's names and remember the land and stuff. I don't let myself. I don't know why I do this, but I do this. So when I was freaking out <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I know what it was. It was when my mom got sick <laughs> and she was staying with me and I was losing my mind a little bit, you know, quietly screaming internally, constantly. Um, <laughs> mom, I love you if you happen to watch this. It was wonderful, but also tough. Okay, Laura, wrap it up. Swing it around. So I have most of the series right here, these red books, but I was missing the final three books. So I got them. Oh my gosh. This is book five in publication order, but I'm not sure where it lands in the new reading order I'm doing, whatever. So it's The Lady of the Lake, and this is much bigger than I thought it would be. Lady of the Lake. Then this is technically book four, but not sure again. Uh, the Tower of Swallows, and this one, Season of Storms, which I believe came out quite a bit after the original series was published in Polish, but I think this ends up coming like second or third in the reading order, unsure. These are by, um, and is it Andrzej Sapkowski? The last name I'm familiar with, there's lots of Polish and German people here in the Milwaukee area, so um, Sapkowski, no problem. But the Andrzej, Andrzej, Andre, Andy wrote these books. So I now have the rest of these to apparently not read. Um, oh my God, what is so heavy in here? <laughs> uh, all right. Mm. More panic buying. Okay. So, the <laughs> yeah. This is number five in the Shetland Island series, Dead Water, by Anne Cleves. I did just read this last week um, on ebook, but this is a series that my mom wants to also read, and she doesn't have an e reader. So I need to go back. Oh no, what a problem! And buy physical copies of the books. So, this was on sale on Amazon. I know I buy from Amazon. I am the worst person in the universe. Please don't at me. Um, so I have this now. I need to fill in some other gaps, but I've got dead water. So I already read this and I owned it. Um, this is number two in the Vera series, also by Ann Cleves, Telling Tales. I don't think I have read this yet. Wait, let me see. I may have read it, or I may have seen the TV adaptation too many times. Unclear, but I have it. And this one I know I have not read. This is the brand new Vera book, The Darkest Evening. This is number nine in the series. And it seems like uh, uh, Anne Cleves has this series, the Shetland series. She's got a brand new series, uh, Matthew Venn, who's a detective. I got that from my mom a year ago Christmas which she wanted me to read right away, and oops, I still have it. Um, but the second one comes out for that soon. She's got, I think, one or two other series, and they tend to end around book eight. So this one, book nine, is, I think, was released several years after the eighth Vera. No matter, at least I have it ready to go whenever I get that far in the Vera series. So looking forward to this. Then I pre-ordered this book, and I've been waiting for it for seven years. Finally, it got a publication date. I am talking about Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Broche. This is the thing that weighs a thousand pounds. Um, I have been a huge fan of hers since her blog, you know, before it got really popular, just before it got really popular. A friend recommended it to me randomly and I was like, oh, let me see. And then I just fell in love. Like I had a, a weekly calendar published by her. I had, um, a big calendar. I think I used to have a, a big copy of the more accurate pain scale printed out. I just love Allie so much, early at hardcore. So when this finally came out, I pre-ordered it. And then um, I got a notification that said, oops, we can't fill this order. <laughs> and it was in stores and everything. I was like, why, why? 
I never got a response and I just sat there and I thought, you know what, I will just wait and I'll ask for for Christmas. I didn't get it for Christmas. So again, in my rage panic buying, I treated myself clearly, but <laughs> I made sure that this was in my cart for sure because I'm very much looking forward to it. This may be one of those books that I save for the right time and Lord knows when that actually is, but you know, it's like an emergency blanket. And then this I read about in book pages for December, January, not sure. Oh no, it wasn't book pages. There was an article about it in Entertainment Weekly, which should be called Entertainment Monthly now. That's a whole other rant. Um, but it sounded really interesting. So this is a short story collection called Kink, um, edited by R.O. Kwan and Garth Greenwell, both authors. Uh, so this is short stories. I thought they were nonfiction at first, but it's fictional short stories by all these people on top. And in case you can't read it, it's Roxanne Gay, Kim Fu, Callum Angus, Vanessa Clark, Alexander Chi, Melissa Fabos, Zane Jukader, Brandon Taylor, Chris Kranz, Chris Cross, jump, jump, Peter Mountford, sorry, Larissa Pham, Kara Hoffman, and Carmen Maria Machado. I'm trying to get more into... <laughs> this is going to sound weird, and I can't think of a way to say it. that doesn't make me sound like a total weirdo. I'm trying to get more comfortable with reading about sexuality and sexual things and um, in a non-creepy way, but just to better understand things more and maybe figure stuff out. I don't know, um, but just to learn about different things. And I don't know anything about kink, really, just passing references from pop culture or in movies or whatever, but I don't really know anything about it. So maybe I will learn something here. I'm sure I will learn something from every single book I read, but I don't know. This should be really good and interesting. Okay, and now to the Blame Heidi and Doris section of the haul. Hi, ladies. <sighs> book outlet, man. I have waited it for quite a long time. I looked at my account and I tend to order once or twice a year and it's usually a doozy of a haul. So let's just get cracking, shall we? <laughs> um, the reason for this, the reason why I'm blaming the two of them is because of their wonderful book club that they've started, The Book Naturalists. Um, some of their future titles are were on Book Outlet. And I thought, well, oh, I guess I have to go over there and order stuff now, right? Isn't that the rule? Um, so one was not available any longer and another one was, that is, one moment, Darwin Comes to Town, How the Urban Jungle Drives Evolution by Menno Schiltuizen. Schiltuizen? So this was one that was available. So I had to get it. And it was a buy one, get one half off. So I had to have an even number of books. And of course, I wanted to get free shipping um, for $35. So I was forced, I tell you, forced to buy the rest of these books. Some of the books were like a dollar or something, you know, dollar and change. Actually, yeah. So that was, I, I felt good about that. Um, sorry, anyways. One of those dollar something books is House Beautiful's Colors for Your Home. 493 designer favorites. This is one of those really dumb books that don't really have a purpose. They just take up shelf space, but I thoroughly enjoy them. I have been a subscriber to House Beautiful for probably a decade, and I love this magazine. This is a magazine that I save issues of. I mean, I'm a magazine saver anyways, because I like magazines, I don't know. Um, but I, my favorite section is always the paint colors they choose. There's a theme for the month for whatever reason, or it's like, what do you normally like to paint kitchens or like whatever it is. I just find it fascinating. I am really into interior design, despite the fact that nothing in my house matches. Um, but anyways, blah, blah. I really like this. Sue, so, this sort of has the same thing. Ooh, I like this color. Bamboo Leaf by Fine Paints of Europe. Look at how green that is. I'm into that green. I love that green. It's my favorite color. So, they break it up by room, apparently. I haven't even flipped through this before. But, good recommendations for colors. And I am have been debating repainting most of the rooms in my house again. And um, this will come in handy. Afterwards, it will just sit on my shelf and I'll go, should I get rid of this? For the next 25 years. And then I won't. 
All right, another one in the nature writing category. This is Adam Nicholson's The Seabird's Cry, The Lives and Loves of the Planet's Great Ocean Voyagers. There are tons of copies of this on Book Outlet in this format, in hardcover, and in the, I think it's a newer edition they have as well. I don't know. So this is about um, traveling ocean paths, fusing, fusing traditional knowledge with astonishing facts science has recently learned about these creatures. The way their bodies actually work, their navigational skills, their ability to smell their way to fish or home, and to understand the discipline of the winds upon which they depend. So, very interesting. Hopefully not depressing. Next up, and of course I'm buying this book, it's Astro Poets. <laughs> Your Guides to the Zodiac by Alex Dimitrioff and Dorothea Lasky. I think I first saw this on Book Break um, UK's channel on... Um, I was on Instagram, <laughs> YouTube. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> so this, I unintentionally accidentally read my entire sign. Like immediately I get this. This came out in 2019. So it has all the signs in order. And then at the beginning, it's like just basic stuff. Was a sun sign, an element, an essence, why we wrote this book, blah, blah. So in each sign is... Um, Let's see if I can find the start of a section here. Let's do Gemini. So it's about Gemini itself. Things you might want to know about a sign. Gemini as a lover, as a friend, style, texting with the Gemini, Gemini imagination, famous Gemini, other famous Gemini, a Gemini playlist, which I really like the playlists and stuff as a general thing. And then there's a brand new poem for each sign too. So I really like stuff. I like astrology and things and I like poetry. So this is kind of a great combo. I am into this super groovy kind of 60s neon cover too. But I, from what I have read, I really enjoy it. I look forward to reading more. Another nature book, this one unfortunately has deckled edges, not a fan. This is The Wood for the Trees, One Man's Long View of Nature by Richard Forty. So this is one year of, one year of his life talking about the land. He lets several acres go, one acre go, four acres of woodland in the Chiltern Hills of Oxfordshire. So it's a year of essentially rewilding what he's noticing from these four acres about nature and life and everything set over one year. I like books like this that are set over a year. I think it'll be really enjoyable. Wish didn't have deck of legend, but that's okay. Beggars can't be choosers. And I am a beggar in this instance. Okay. This book I hadn't seen anywhere in a shop or listed most places except a book outlet, weirdly. So this is Haddon Hall, When David Invented Bowie by Najib. So it's a graphic novel, graphic nonfiction um, about David Bowie and growing up what his life was like. Very, very bright and colorful, as you can see. Ooh. Little bio about Bowie. Should be super cool. And this one, another graphic novel. Um, this was just, I just bought it because, <laughs> Blossoms and Bones, Drawing a Life Back Together, a graphic memoir by Kim Kranz. So despite the very colorful cover, the inside is all, I, I don't know how to do this, black and white stuff. So, yeah. Oh, there is a very bright ribbon bookmark, though. That's nice. So I think her life kind of fell apart. So it's her coming back to herself. Stop it, Laura. Um, unsure, I don't know, but it looked nice. So I got it. Okay, last stack here, promise. Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> and other questions you should have answers to when you work in the White House by Alistra Mastro Monaco, Alyssa Mastro Monaco, excuse me. I've seen this around for a long time. I've always wanted to read it, and I'm finally very, very happy to have my own copy of this book. It's supposed to be very honest and funny and heartfelt, and I will happily spend any time with the Obamas that I can get. So 
looking forward to this. Back to nature writing again. This is The Living Great Lakes, Searching for the Heart of the Inland Seas by Jerry Dennis. Um, I've heard lots of great things about this book for years and years now. And it's just been on my long list TBR for ages. And this was finally there. So, I mean, honestly, except for the dot on the top, this could have come off any shelf. It's brand, brand, brand new. And even though I live on Lake Michigan or close to Lake Michigan, I don't know much about them. I mean, I know about the shipwrecks and stuff, but that's kind of it. A little bit of history. I just think it's fascinating. So looking forward to this one. This is my third book by this author, and I have read none of them so far. It's Melmoth by Sarah Perry. Again, Deckle Edge. Why? Um, so this is, she wrote The Essex Serpent, and I think this is the same person who also wrote After the Eclipse, which is a memoir of her mother's murder when she was a child. I mean, not a memoir of her the murder, but like her mother's life, and then her processing the grief, I think. It's spelled the same way, Sarah Perry. I think it's the same person. I don't know. So this is about um, a riff, I guess, on Melmoth, which is a fairy tale character of some kind. Not sure, but got this. This was also on my long-term TBR list. There were tons of copies of this book as well. Kings of the Yukon. One Summer Paddling Across the Far North by Adam Weymouth. So Adam spends one summer in a canoe paddling the Yukon River from Canada all the way out to, is it the Bering Sea where it ends? Yeah, the Bering Sea. So he cuts through Alaska and Canada and talks about, you know, nature, of course, and being out in the wild and salmon. It's a big salmon river, huge salmon river. And what the population is dwindling, what that's looking like, what that means for the future, etc. Should be very interesting. And last but not least, you know, I love me Robin Hood stuff. So I, th I thought this was a standalone. And after I added it into my library thing, um, library, I realized it was the start of a series because of course it is. <laughs> of course it's the start of a series. This is Nottingham, No King, No Rules by Nathan McCarrick. And... Mm, so it's some familiar names, some unfamiliar names to me in the Robin Hood myth. There's arable, which sounds like um, something you would do for plants, but whatever. A servant girl with a secret, Robin and William, soldiers running from their pasts. Marion, a noblewoman working for change, Guy of Gisborne, a beleaguered guard captain, and Elena Gamwell, a brash, ambitious thief. They all become intertwined. But, you know, King Richard is still fighting in, what do they call it again? The Holy Land, maybe. So still set in Nottingham, still set in the 1100s. I don't know. But it's hopefully good. I mean, on one hand, I hope it's good because I want to enjoy everything I read. On the other hand, I really don't want to start another series. <laughs> but I will because <laughs> it's me. So how many books is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, that's 33 books. I gotta rein it in. I just have to. So this is a weird mix, but it's very me. <laughs> um, have you read anything in here? Do you want to read anything? Uh, let me know. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't been on Instagram or anything lately. I, I don't know what my problem is. I just don't want to be on my computer. That's the honest truth. I don't want to be anywhere near it. So I just avoid it, which is not great. And I'm working on it, but it is what it is right now. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all staying safe and reading something wonderful. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.